Okay. Okay. It looks like I am finally live a few minutes late because um, what happened, what happened was, I don't know, for some reason I had a hard time getting logged onto YouTube through Chrome because I usually use Safari and whatever. Okay. Anyway. All right, guys, I wanted to do another live, and the reason for this live, okay, is um, I'm going to be making some changes, okay, on the channel and uh, social media in general, okay? And um, what I'm basically going to do is I realized recently that I was actually making content and talking to people that I do not want to talk to, Okay. Um, you know, like I was like actually like making content like for my haters. Okay. I was actually like making content for people that I absolutely did not want to talk to, did not want to certainly did not want to work with, didn't want to coach or anything. Okay. And, um, it's something that actually happens quite a bit because what happens is when you're doing something, when you're like creating content, you know, there are always people like you're trying to help people. There are always people that want to speak negatively. Okay. And it's interesting because believe it or not, like those are the people that need the help the most. Okay. Those are the people that need the help more than anybody else. So, uh, what you really, you know, your problem is basically you actually want to help them, but they do not want to be helped. You know, they do not want to see and you or anybody else do well, much less do they want to actually like be helped themselves. Okay. And they're also usually like the most vocal people. Like you see this on like, you know, was Yelp and stuff like that. You know, people go into a restaurant, they love the food, you know, and they never make a, they never make a comment on Yelp, but then somebody goes in there and he's like, yeah, I went into, um, whatever, you know, uh, an Italian restaurant, they just had pasta. It's like, dude, you're an idiot. Okay. Like seriously, like, you know, what's your problem here, you know, or whatever. So it's like the negative people are always like the most vocal. And then once again, like as a creator, you kind of think to yourself all the time, like, oh, well, these people are going to like bring down, you know, like the people I'm really trying to help. So you kind of like have to, you know, like, you know, you end up like, like arguing with them. And um, like I said, eventually you end up making content for them. Okay. So, but the problem is what you end up doing is first of all, you're ignoring the people that you want to work with and you are not helping them because you're trying to help people who don't want to be helped. And um, another thing is you're actually creating content that actually attracts more negative people who you do not want to deal with, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and give you guys an example. Like, you are like, I'm always talking about like, you know, oh, well, like you're know, getting up early in the morning. I'm always talking about like, you know, you have time to exercise. I'm always talking about like, you know, you have money for, you know, decent food and stuff like that. And people are always getting negative about it. So then you end up making more content about how easy it is to afford decent food. You get, you know, more content about how like, you know, you can get up early, you can whatever. And the people, like I said, just don't want to hear it. Okay. Whereas at the same time, you're still not helping the people that you want to help. I mean, like, you know, I got you, there are people like there's one, there's one person where like, I actually made a video, like this was years ago where I actually went and bought like steak and eggs. I was on the steak and eggs diet, steak and eggs for one day. Okay. And I showed exactly, you know, how much it cost to eat, like, you know, from like the dozen eggs I had, how much it cost to eat, like the, you know, however many eggs I was eating and how much I was eating, like one pound of meat, like a steak in the morning, a steak in the afternoon. And like, basically I showed how much is exactly the food that I was eating. I even counted the butter. I even figured out like a part portion of a stick of butter that I was using uh, to cook with. And somebody's like, yeah, man, people just don't understand, you know, that, uh, you know, people don't have money. I legitimately compared that to like a meal at like McDonald's. I actually had like a picture of the food that I bought with the price on it. And I actually had a picture, like a screenshot of what a meal at a local McDonald's would cost. Not a super sized anything, just like a normal hamburger and like a normal drink and a normal fries, not like super duper sized with all the trimmings. And it was cheaper to have one meal a day, or sorry, two meals a day, my entire eating of eggs and steak than it was to have one meal at McDonald's. And people were like, yo, he just don't understand, uh, you know, that it's, uh, you know, some people just don't have money. So $10 
goes further if you're in a McDonald's than $10 goes in a like a, a supermarket. So like if I give you $10 and you know you walk into a supermarket you could only buy $1 worth of food with $10 but if I give you you know $10 it, you go into a, a like a McDonald's, you could buy five hundred dollars worth of food. It's like the fact of the matter is, this is like a fucking excuse. You know, you spend fucking all this money on takeout, you spend all this money on junk food, you spend all this money on alcohol, you spend all this money on you know fucking you know whatever, and you're and like you legitimately can actually live cheaper and eat healthier, but you still want to argue and you just want to argue like like you're an idiot, like like you're just an absolute idiot. You know, another person looked at the food because it was more than a pound of meat that I had bought. And I was like, okay, price per pound was so many dollars. And I was like, yes, I eat a half a pound in the morning, a half a pound in the afternoon. I eat one pound a day. Okay. And someone actually complains like, well, that, that, that's the price per pound. That's not the price on the package. I did not eat the whole package in a day. I ate one pound a day. So the price per pound. But like I said, people just want to you know, argue. I think you should wake up early in the morning and do something that is important to you. OK, now this could be starting a business. This could be starting, you know, to like bond with your family. This could be like starting to write that book you wanted to write, learning the damn, you know, how to how to speak a language, read a book, you know, writing poetry, going to the gym, you know, whatever. I think you should wake up in the morning and the first thing before the world pollutes your brain, you should immediately go ahead and do what is most important to you. OK, uh, guaranteed you're going to have time to do it. Number two, haters don't get up before 5 a.m. So if you're walking around at five in the morning, you know, like nobody's going to be like, you know, trying to derail your whatever you're doing in your life. OK, and you're certainly not going to be like, oh, I don't have time now because you just wake up early and you do it. And people are like, well, I, I need my sleep. OK, so you're going to stand up, stay up all night, drinking beer, eating donuts, watching Netflix and playing video games until two o'clock. You know, then you're going to like wake up at like seven o'clock, which means you got five hours of sleep and then you're going to barely make it to work in time. But I'm going to go to bed at like, let's say nine, 10 o'clock, get up at five, which is seven or eight hours of sleep. So you think that by staying up until two and sleeping until seven, you are valuing your sleep and getting more sleep than me if I sleep from nine or 10 o'clock to five in the morning. You're a fucking, like you legitimately are incapable of counting. You cannot count two to three, three to four, four to, five. like you legitimately are an absolute, you're, you're a legitimate moron, okay? And you're like really grasping, like I, I value my sleep. So I'm gonna stay up until two fucking drinking beer and watching fucking TV and then fucking get up at fucking seven and fucking think five hours of sleep is more than your seven or eight hours of sleep. So like I say, like people, and the problem is these people just do not want. Now the people that do this do need more help than anybody else. The people who are negative, the people who you know pollute their bodies, the people who never accomplish anything, the people who have low self-esteem, the people who all they wanna do is just you know, tear other people down so they feel a little bit better. Those are the people who need the help the most. So you want to help them the most, but they do not want to be helped. Okay. So like I said, I'm not really going to be negative anymore at all in any of my content. From now on, I am just going to talk about like my life, the way I live it, you know, what I believe in, how I help other people. And I'm just going to basically be like, check it out. Like if you want to sleep all day and fucking piss your life away, fine. I don't want you on my channel. I don't want to talk to you. I'm not going to make content for you. If you want to piss your life, well, you go ahead and do it. Like, I'm proud of you. Go ahead and do it. If you want to, like, waste your life, like, well, you know, I could spend $50 or $100 a night sucking down beer and doing drugs and fucking whatever, but I don't have enough money to, like, you know, go to a gym and I don't have enough money to, like, eat decent food. It's like, fine. You're right. You're right. You don't. Fine. Just spend the rest of your life spending $100 a weekend, getting fucking wasted, doing fucking drugs, being a piece of shit. I, I, I don't care. I don't care. So honestly, you know, on one hand, people are probably going to think like, oh, Chris is, you know, Bob's like really cool now. He's not being negative anymore. But it's like, honestly, because I don't really give a fuck. You know, I mean, it's like, you know, if you see like a bum on the street fucking shooting heroin into the large vein in his penis, like okay, you know, you should probably run over and be, oh my God, stop. But you're not going to because you honestly, and I know this is going to sound tough, but like you don't give a fuck if the guy lives or dies. You're not going to like slam your brakes, get out of your car and try to help this guy who just does not want to be helped. 
So that's basically the way things are going to be going now, like on my channel. It's like, you know, well, I don't have time to do this and I don't have time to do that. Okay, check it out. This is the way it is. Good. You're right. You're right. You know, the 1% is where the 1% is because 99% is where the 99% is. So if the 1% thinks in a certain way that will get them to the top 1%, 99% of the people are going to be there. Like there would be no 1% if everybody had a six pack, if everybody made money, if everybody had a happy relationship, if everybody was healthy, you know, if everybody was intelligent, you know, if nobody was negative, there would just be like a hundred percent of what's now the 1%. But fortunately people want to screw themselves up and sabotage themselves. Therefore there is in fact a 1% and a 99%. So anyway, like I said, that's basically what I'm going to be doing from now on is just, like I said, talking to the people who either a already are working on their lives. They're going to the gym, they're working out, they're dieting. They might not be getting the results they want, but they are putting in the effort. Okay. Or the people who don't know what to do and are willing to put in the effort. Like they're willing to put in the effort, but they just don't know what to do. So they need help. So I'm going to help the people who want help. And the other people, you know, I mean, it's like ask any lifeguard, you know, ask any, you know, whatever, you know, combat swimmer or whatever, you know, anybody who deals with like rescuing people, it's like somebody just wants to like pull you down. You got to let them go down. You don't want like two, three, four, five dead people because one person, you know, you got to let them go. And so if you want to fuck your life up, that's fine. I am not going to argue with anybody anymore. And as a matter of fact, I'm probably just going to start like, you know, doing more of like blocking. Right now, I don't delete and block posts unless they're like completely wrong. You know, somebody's like, oh, you got to. One guy said that like sugar is like the healthiest thing. And it's been proven that protein, you know, you don't need protein and it's alive. I and mean, you're going to die if you don't have protein and fat. You're going to die. You know, you need protein and fat. If you eat carbs, you still need protein and fat. You don't need to eat carbs, but you need protein and fat. So that's like just a complete lie. That's like wrong. No wrong information on my thing. But right now, if somebody's just being a loser or whining a little bitch, I'll, you know, and if, if, if I think it's going to cause a problem with my mindset or the mindset of anybody watching, I'm just going to delete and block him because I'd much rather have a small channel, a small social media following of people who actually give a fuck and actually want to take action than like millions of losers you know, who just, you know, sign in just to like argue with me because they fucking want to, because I'm telling them they don't have to be losers, but they're too lazy. So they'd rather argue about how they are losers. I mean, I've had people that I've worked with even that were like, the only time I've seen them passionate or excited about anything was when they were telling me how they could not do something. It's like, no, you don't understand. I can't do that because of this and this and this. It's like, fuck, if you are a one millionth as fucking passionate about why you could do anything whatsoever in your life, you'd be a fucking rock star, but you're not. So anyway, that is just something that I wanted to put out there because like I said, there's going to be some changes around here. Okay. Bilal, I hope that's how you pronounce your name and I've seen your comments a lot. Bilal. Uh, hey, Bob. Just wanted to say, I love the channel. love your work. If you would like to see more consistency with your uploads, regardless of the content, whether it's how to fight or other content. Okay, actually, that's a cool thing too. Thank you. I appreciate the que the comment about like how to fight because the whole concept that I had when I was you know coming up with these channels, like I first started out because I got really lean. I was fat and I got really lean, so I wanted to talk about that. But um, you know, after a while, what you notice when you improve yourself is that you have your physical world, you know, health style or appearance, whatever, your relationships, friends, family, relationship to yourself, whatever. And then you have your material world, you know, your money, your possessions, your business and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, people ask about spirituality. Well, spirituality is always a part of everything. You know, I don't like it when people are like, you know, on Sunday, they're like, oh, Jesus has a plan for me. Jesus has a plan. And then Monday morning, they go into work and something bad happens. They're like, fuck, 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 fuck. I'm so fucked. I'm so fuck, fuck, fuck. It's like, I thought Jesus had a plan for you. Shut the fuck up. This is serious. I'm fucking fucked right now. I don't need that Jesus shit. I'm no, you, if you're being spiritual or religious or anything, it should like go through your whole life. Okay. So like I said, you got your physical, your material and your relationship world and spirituality, whatever kind of religion or spirituality or philosophy should permeate all three. Should all, you should always be spiritual or religious or philosophical, whatever you got. So like you were saying about, you know, fighting content. You know, what you notice is if you have a problem in one, I was in terrible shape. Okay. So after I was in terrible shape and I got in really good shape, 
then I started to notice like other things. So like, let's say, you know, you're spinning plates or you have like, you know, three little levels here on a graph. And it's like, okay, well now I was in like terrible shape. Okay. Like, you know, financially and materialistically, I was doing good relationships were doing good. And I was just in horrible shape. Like I'm not even on the screen right now. Okay. And then all of a sudden I got shredded. So it's like, boom, now I'm like top 1% physical. Like I, I am healthy. I'm strong. I look really good. My clothes fit really well. Like physically, boom, I'm like 100%, like top 1%. But now I'm like looking down. I'm like, whereas before I was doing okay financially, before I was doing okay with my relationships, a lot better than I was when I was fat physically. Now that I'm an incredible top 1% physically, it's like, fuck, now I need to pull those up. So, you know, like you're saying, you know, it's not enough to be in shape. And not be able to understand violence. Okay. It helps a lot to be in shape. You're, you know, probably gonna be the last person somebody's gonna choose to attack. But at the same time, you know, you need to still understand the whole concept of like violence. Okay. How to deal with a violent situation. Just because you're in shape doesn't mean that women are gonna be throwing themselves at you. It does happen. Women are more interested in you. It's much easier when you're in shape for women to be, you know, to, to get women basically. But at the same time, it's like, you still need to learn how to talk to women. You know, you still need to learn how to make money. You still need to learn to do all kinds of stuff. So basically, you know, what I came up with originally was like, I was fat. Now I'm shredded. I want to teach people this, but now it's also like, there's a lot more to that. You know, like it's, I basically wanted to like live a life worth living and then show people how I live. And if they're interested in learning something or something else or everything, they can. Okay. So like you're saying, Bill, Bill, like I am certainly going to be putting out more content. I'm going to put out various content. And as a matter of fact, this is a question that I've been having about putting out like tactical information, like self-defense type information. I was considering creating another channel for it. Um, or I was considering doing what I was going to call tactical Thursdays, where every Thursday I'd put out a video that has to do with situational awareness, you know, self-defense, something like that. So I'll probably end up asking you guys uh, about that. So, yes, thank you very much. Another thing about the uploads is, you know, I, I spoken to like coaches, like business coaches. And they're talking about like, you know, short reels, but I really kind of, you know, enjoy doing the longer videos. So should you do shorts or should you do longer videos? Honestly, I just... I've noticed that a lot of people, like I really connect to a lot of people over YouTube, so it's probably going to be a lot of longer videos. So anyway, suggestions. If you have suggestions for videos, put them, just comment down anywhere on any video. Um, and like I said, I'll go ahead and um, I'll go ahead and get into that. Okay, Rob1017, what's up, Bob? Advice on tackling mental hunger triggers. Thinking you're hungry when you're bored uh, because you're bored when you're not. Yeah, okay. So First of all, two things. Yeah, definitely mental hunger triggers. Okay. Um, physical hunger doesn't come along as often as people think. A lot of it's just mental. Okay. And uh, the second thing is like eating because you're bored. Okay. Uh, that is certainly one special case of like a non hungry hunger trigger. Okay. So speaking, in general, but also specifically for low carb diets, what I recommend, uh, you know, you do is uh, obviously you completely avoid anything that could be considered a trigger food. Okay. For me, I really cannot eat carbohydrates and I'm not talking about garbage. I'm not talking about junk food. I'm talking about literally like one of my favorite, uh, one of my favorite like kitchens or cuisines is Turkish. I love Turkish food. Okay. And what's Turkish food? It's a lot of meat. It's a lot of vegetables, you know, uh, cheese, uh, salads, uh, you know, uh, you know, olives and stuff like that. They also have some pretty good bread. Okay. They also have some pretty good rice. And the problem is, so like when I go there, like I'm, it's not even junk food. It's not even like I can't stop eating cookies or cereal. It's like if I go to a restaurant and they have good like potatoes, good rice, you know, good bread, I can't stop. So I like, don't even let it near me. Okay. So the first thing is definitely to avoid your trigger foods. For me, it's certainly carbohydrates in general. Like I said, obviously junk foods, addictive, you know, high sugar, certainly addictive, but even like I said, for me, you know, just, uh, rice, potatoes, things like that, 
are also addicted. So I just completely cut them out. And I've said before, I think the reason that a lot of people never get results on a diet until they go on a uh, low carb diet is because they're addicted to carbohydrates. You know, so like I said, like, you know, oh, eat, you know, eat just one donut, eat a little piece of cake with dinner and then that's it. If you're an alcoholic, you can't drink one beer with dinner. Okay. You'll drink like a, a case of beer. Okay. If you're a carb addict, you can't have one piece of cake with dinner. You'll have like a piece of cake and then the rest of the cake and then you'll start the cookies and, hey, I screwed up my diet. So I'm going to go ahead and eat whatever I want. Hey, I screwed up to yesterday. I'm going to eat whatever for the rest of the week. So definitely go ahead and avoid that. Okay. Avoid your trigger foods. Okay. Um, another thing that I say uh, is cheat before you cheat. Okay. Uh, when you have actual physical hunger, because you're on like a cutting diet, definitely, you know, when you start to get to the point where you're like, you know, I'm really getting hungry, go ahead and have like a refeed meal or a refeed day or a diet break before you get to the point where you're so hungry that you cheat. So like I said, cheat before you cheat, you know, go off your diet and go back to more of a maintenance diet or have like a refeed day before you cheat. And if you're doing low carb, my style low carb, you probably are eating a lot of protein, less fat than usual. So just go ahead and add in some fat for like a meal or a day or, you know, go back to maintenance calories for like a couple of days and take a diet break. Okay. Um, another thing about that is you need to kind of like think to yourself what you learned. Okay. In terms of food. Okay. So when people talk about like, <clears throat> you know, you're going to have, um, you know, obesity is hereditary. It actually is hereditary. Now it doesn't mean that you got like a fat gene in your body. What it means is, you know, when I was a kid and, you know, my mommy brought me on like a mommy daughter, you know, pizza hut day because my boyfriend broke up with me. So she taught me when I'm sad, I should eat and then I'll feel good. You know, and then when I, you know, got you know, won a football game or whatever, my dad took me out to go ahead and eat a bunch of garbage. So to celebrate, I ate a bunch of garbage, you know, and um, you're like, hey, you know, at night we would always eat. And it was so exciting because Friday night or Saturday or whatever, we'd order pizza and we'd have all the soda we wanted and we'd sit in front of the TV and we would, you know, go ahead and just, so basically what, you're, what they're, you know, what your uh, family is teaching you is like, you're sad, eat to feel better. Dopamine spike. If you're happy, eat to feel even better, to celebrate dopamine spike. You know, you're bored, eat to feel better. So you have to think to yourself, like when somebody like, once again, uh, was it Steve Reeves, who was the original muscle man, you know, the original Hercules back in the black and white movies, the original pirate, um, you know, the original muscle man actor, he said like, you know, because he was back in World War II era, he's like, you know, if, if somebody comes over to your house and the first thing you do is take out the coffee with the sugar and, you know, and the cake, you have a bad habit. Somebody comes over, we win a bond, go ahead and have coffee and cake. You know, that's a bad habit. That's an unhealthy habit. So what you need to do is you need to figure out when you, like when you eat, how you're feeling before you eat. So like if you start to binge or you start to eat garbage, like what was I feeling before, what happened to me? How was I feeling? What mind state was I in when I decided to eat? And then also think about your childhood. It could be your childhood. It could be, you know, it doesn't have to be your, you know, your parents. Maybe you didn't have a good relationship to your parents, but like one of your like teachers or coaches or something used to take you out for ice cream all the time. And now you're wondering why, you know, every time that something good, bad or whatever happens, you eat ice cream. It's like, so think about one, when you do do something bad, eat too much or eat, um, you know, eat too much, eat the wrong food, et cetera. What were you feeling? What happened to you that made you feel a certain way before you made the decision? And also think about your childhood. Like, how were you programmed to eat? Okay. Um, you know, on the opposite, like I legitimately knew somebody when I was a kid, I was doing martial arts. He was an older guy. He was like in his thirties or whatever, but he looked like he was kind of out of shape. He could perform, but he was out of shape. And I, you know, and I somehow asked him at one point, he's like, dude, you don't understand. Like when I was a kid, you know, Saturday, Sunday morning, my dad would wake me up. He'd be like, hey, you know, just you and me, just us guys. You know, we're going to have fun. We're going to you know, have pancakes and we're going to have bacon and eggs. And, you know, we're going to have cake and we're going to talk. And it's just going to be us guys. So he basically learned that, like, when he hangs out with someone he likes, he eats a bunch of garbage. You know, he's when he has the day off, he eats a bunch of garbage. And it was just ingrained in him. And that's why he was not in perfect shape. You know, he worked out. He was in he was physically he was capable but he was overweight because even though he worked out, he just ate a bunch of garbage. 
Um, uh, so like I said, so you, you know, just think about things like that. In terms of being bored, uh, what I absolutely positively recommend is that you don't get bored, okay? Um, you know, and I don't mean that you have to work 24-7. What I mean is that you have to live your life in a way where every moment has meaning, okay? So I'll tell you, like, you know, for example, like, uh, you know, my girlfriend and I, okay, or ex-girlfriend or whatever, she actually left the country and she's doing the four hour work week thing in Panama right now. But anyway, when we were living together, basically we would wake up, I'd wake up a little bit earlier. I'd you know, write down my goals and whatever, and you know, kind of get ready. We'd be in the gym by six. So we would drive together to the gym by six. You know, she'd actually read like, you know, whatever news or whatever in the car on her phone when I'm, when I'm like, you know, driving, we'd, we didn't work out together, but like, you know, we split up, you know, she did her work and I did mine. Then we came back, drove home together. Then we went for an hour walk together. You know, no phones, nothing. We would just go for a walk and we just you know, look at nature and stuff like that. Um, you know, our ideas on the weekend would basically be like we'd go off to a cafe. Uh, you know, I'd work on my business with my laptop. She'd go ahead and, you know, work on something. Um, you know, we would go for walks a lot, you know, stuff like that at night when we did spend some time and like didn't really like, you know, work or exercise or anything. We would sit down and we'd like watch something that was like interesting. You know, something that would like maybe a, some YouTube videos that were like about an interesting concept, maybe travel. And I'd stop and I'd tell her like when I was in Spain and da 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 da. You know, or she'd go ahead and talk about when she was in Mexico. Da 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 da. You know, we we we'd Google things together. We'd sit down and like Google things. I remember talking about toilets for some reason, and then how the toilets in France they still have those toilets with like the little footprints on the ground. You squat down on them, and then like we started looking over to see what they were like in Japan. Then we found out Japan has these you know, high tech toilets. So we legitimately Googled toilets, Japanese toilets and whatever, laying in bed on our phones. Then we ended up on Amazon. We found out how much a Japanese toilet with remote control and everything costs. Like that's the kind of stuff that we did. We were never bored and we had a lot of sex. You know, so what I'm saying is like, said, so just don't, don't be bored. Like there's, you know, boredom is like one of the most dangerous things because a lot of people eat when they're bored. Number one, you're often taught when you're bored, eat. You know, I don't know what to, I, you know, I have nothing to do. Let's go to a bar. Or let's go to a you know, restaurant, whatever. Let's go grab some fast food or whatever. Or, um, you know, what, like, you're, so basically, like I said, you're taught, like, just like when you're bored to just go ahead and like, you know, and also when you're bored, you're kind of like depressed. You don't feel very good. So when you're bored, you need like a dopamine hit. And once again, you know, eating garbage food is a great way to get a cheap dopamine hit. So like, that's another thing, like I said, definitely uh, beyond, beyond that, make sure you drink a lot of water. A lot of times people think they're thirsty, they're uh, hungry, they're really thirsty. If you are keto, especially if you're keto, make sure you get plenty of electrolytes. Uh, you know, no salt, which is a brand of potassium salt and sea salt. I just put that on all the food as much as I want. Um, you know, and sometimes I will be hungry or think I'm hungry because I'm craving electrolytes. Okay. Like, why do people who aren't hungry want to eat bacon sometimes? Well, maybe their electrolytes are low and bacon has a lot of a lot of salt in it. It also has a lot of fat, so you might just be hungry as in not having a lot of calories. But if you eat a lot of food and you're just craving bacon or something like that or potato chips, you're probably looking for the salt. So make sure that you get enough water, make sure you get enough salt so that you don't like have this like fake hunger signaling. So... I hope some of those things are okay. <laughs> Help. All right. Thanks, Bob. Blackwing, regular commenter. Wow, it's been a minute. You got hair, dude. A lot of a lot of hair. Great to see you. you're still going. The algorithm deleted you from my feed a while, a few years back. Yeah, I don't know what's up with that. Um, that that's that's just an interesting thing. Honestly, I really do not like um the way the YouTube algorithm is right now because for me, there are people that I follow on on YouTube. And when I look at my feed, I don't see the people that I follow. It's kind of like sucks. <laughs> it just really sucks. And I actually have to go up to that little like notifications tab and actually see what people who I follow have uploaded because I really have a problem. I have no idea what's going on with YouTube. I'm unhappy with it because it's not just not what I'm looking for. It's stuff that I'm like legitimately not interested in. Like I'm going to follow this guy's martial arts page or this guy's, uh, you know, workout channel or whatever. And they show somebody else who I'm not interested. In. It's not just, I want to see the people I subscribe to, but it's also like, I don't like these things that are being shown. So whatever, we'll see what happened. 
uh dk hey bob appreciate your content turkish bread is too good yeah turkish bread is is too good. like i said it's just um turkish honestly it's probably like the healthiest damn food out there you know in terms of like especially like fast food um like i said it's meat vegetables you know is basically what it is but they do have some incredible pita bread and they do have some incredible um like i said the rice is really good and um you know, even even the um, you know even the the, the desserts are basically are just like some kind of like a complex carb dipped in like honey or something like that. You know, it's like it's it's really healthy. But like I said, I just cannot handle even healthy food, man. Just I love Turkish food, but I just gotta stay away from their rice and their bread. Most definitely proceed with Tactical Thursdays. Keep up the good job, Costas. Okay, Costas. Thank you. I appreciate that. That's pretty cool. Um, yeah, I definitely I will. Like I said, I definitely will. Um, that's actually, believe it or not, uh, self-defense. Uh, when I got out of the Army, stayed in Germany, I had a job working for a security company. So that was my first like real civilian job. That's my first real job, my first real uh, apartment and everything <laughs> you know, after getting out of the Army. Um, so... Um, Believe it or not, and I was also working as a bouncer on the side, just you know, because I like to throw down once in a while, I guess. But uh, so actually, like the first thing that I ever blogged about, and the first thing I ever YouTubed about, uh, was self defense, believe it or not. So, uh, yeah, I got like plenty of opinions, plenty of experience, lots of stuff that I like to talk about. That, um, yeah, so okay, anyway. I think that was about it. So like I said, uh, what I am doing for people who are actually keto interested, okay, is I am going to be doing another um, keto kickstart. It's like a free 14-day uh, Facebook group. What I'm going to do is I'm going to like lead you through how to get fat adapted. So basically, we're going to do a whole bunch of lives. We're going to do live Q&As like three times a week. Uh, there's a Facebook group, so you can actually ask me questions in the community. I'm going to post the videos in the community so you guys can go ahead and, you know, watch them and, uh, you know, see, um, you know, get the information to ask me any questions. The idea is basically people can't get fat adapted and that's why they fail at keto. So I'm going to actually walk you through water intake, fat intake, electrolyte intake, very important electrolyte intake, fiber intake, you know, how to deal with some of the mental aspects, how to deal with, um, you know, some of the uh, carb addictions, uh, et cetera. So like I said, I'm going to actually walk you through And Like I said, it's free. You know, honestly, you know, some of the people who join are going to want to hire me as a coach. Okay. But, you know, aside from that, like I said, if you don't want to, like, there's no reason you can't just jump on and get fat adapted. And then after that, you will be like keto. Okay. No more carb cravings, no keto flu. You will have avoided it entirely. You'll actually be feeling good on keto. And if you want to just stay on keto, you certainly can. Um, YouTube, I think I already put that down in the comments down below. Um, there's like a Google forms link. If you're watching this on Instagram, just go over to my profile, click the link in my profile. And like I said, just go ahead and sign up for the keto kickstart. And so far as, uh, like I said, questions, in terms of uh, tactical Thursdays, you know, self-defense, shooting, et cetera, go ahead and just ask me what questions you want. And I'll just make sure that I have a list and I'll just make the videos uh, for tactical Thursdays. Uh, in terms of anything else you guys want to talk about or want me to talk about, definitely just comment anywhere. You know, sometimes I'll ask for questions, but like I said, even if I don't ask for questions, just comment basically on any video. Uh, and I will probably see the comment. And I'll probably go ahead and make a, um, make a video about it. So anyway, thank you guys for watching. Appreciate it. Um, and like I said, uh, this is the new future for the uh, channel. No more negativity. If somebody wants to waste his life, go ahead and let them. And if somebody wants to come up into the top 1%, hey, you know, we got to hang together. Okay. So thank you guys. Appreciate all the questions. Appreciate everyone who jumped on. And uh, I will see you guys in the next video.